Hello, boys and ghouls. Welcome to episode 52 of Dads from the Crypt, a Tales from the Crypt podcast. My name is Jason. I'm joined by Jody. Hello. Mondo is off in a uh, metal festival in the middle of a desert, so he won't be here. But tonight, we are joined again by our dear friend from BJ Slack, Whitney. Hello, hello. Welcome back. And that's not a joke about Mondo. Like, he really yeah, is. Yeah, he literally is. In- <laughs> Like a metal fest in the middle of the desert. It's impressive. Like it's is it Wyoming? Awesome. Is he in Wyoming? I know he flew into I Salt think Lake Wyoming, City. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. then drove into Wyoming. Yeah. That's dedication. <laughs> that's um, real metal. That's, that's, really, that's really metal, man. <laughs> um, but Whitney, you were on for our Halloween episodes where we did three movies back to back to back, <laughs> which like three really hours, happened. three hours of drunken rambling about I was gonna Halloween. Say, yeah, that was a long one. It progressively <laughs> got like more and more drunk, rambly. Which you could you could say is the tr- same as true for the movies. <laughs> yes, yes. There, um, there you go. It was real put together at the beginning and got a little messy, but hey. a little, a little sloppy. and sloppier, sloppier yeah. and sloppier. <laughs> um, but actually, the incidentally, the trailer for Halloween uh, Ends came out this week. Um, it didn't really show much, but um, it got off a bit of a vibe, and there are definitely some callbacks to the 78 original, so I'm very interested to see where they go with all that. Um, yeah, lot- I'm, I'm an easy sell for Halloween. I'll watch it. Like, it, th- There's not a chance I'm not going to watch it. Yeah, I, watched- I hope it does streaming again, because that was really nice. We all watching it together, but yeah. I mean, y'all know I liked both of them, mm-hmm. uh, but I haven't, I haven't watched the teaser. I'm a bit of a a, te- a trailer avoider. Um, mm-hmm. I like to be sold on s- staff and synopsis, synopses, synopses, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all those synopsis. Um, so I'm I, like, I already want to see it, so I don't want to even have any visuals in my mind when I go I, in. I agree with you fundamentally. I, I'm just a sucker <laughs> for a good trailer. Yeah, I'm the same way. I, I like the idea of skipping all the trailers, but then someone's like, hey, did you see that new trailer? And I'm like, ah, no, I'm going to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Again, especially, we'll talk about conventions in a bit, but Comic-Con is like Christmas for oh, uh, yeah. trailers. Right. So it's just like, you know, you just got to be in the know with it. Um, and actually, I rewatched Halloween Kills this last week. My oldest son is visiting. Mm-hmm. Um, he hadn't seen it yet. And it's not that bad. As, as Everyone likes to like bash on it. Yeah, the hospital, everything happens in the hospital is just not good but the the other like two-thirds of the movie are actually pretty yeah. good the whole prequel bit uh set in 78 is really good you always forget about that and just how well they recreated the 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 fire coming out of the fire is so fucking cool it mm-hmm. makes up for anything that i disliked about the film and i think there were parts of even the hospital scene that i didn't think was at because again i i think we go listen to the episode but i like felt like it was emotional and i felt really Mm -hmm. bad and what happened and i i guess like people just don't want that in their halloween but yeah i think they were so hyped on the 2008 halloween that no they they didn't get a lot to live up to they didn't get that so then they all bashed on it but i think it's one of those we're going to come around to in the in the coming years especially after the next one comes out I felt that way about Fear Street too. Mm-hmm. When we got the Fear Street trilogy, I think people liked the. I mean, I lo- liked the first one. I think that was my favorite. And then for me, the middle one was a downer. But we weren't done with it. So sometimes right. I think you know yeah. you don't have the full package. But yeah, I like I liked it. I like Michael Myers. Well, yeah, he's my man. Um, yeah, not but... really. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Whitney, just so people know, uh, tell us just a few things about yourself um, and anything you want to plug. We'll just get that done at the top and then tell us your experience with Tales of the Crypt. Sure. So you'll find me on the internet typically talking about horror movies or video games or my dog um, or drawing. That's usually what I like to just put out into the world. Um, I work in the gaming industry. I love video games. And that's really how I got um, introduced to BGH Slack. And then y'all guys, I was always in the spooky gaming channel trying to give people free games. Um, (laughs) And then, yeah, I got into part of Jody's trivia and never looked back. I'm probably one of the major uh, 
what do you call it? Like contributors to trivia only ever being two or three rounds long <laughs> <laughs> tend to be a chatty Kathy. So, but it's always because everyone that joins trivia is so awesome to talk to. And you're also wearing the perfect uh, video game horror shirt. Yes. It. Yes. It was <laughs> between this or my Ripley shirt or like a BGH or a Joe Bob shirt. But I was like, this one's, this one's good. I, I don't no. get to wear, I don't wear it that often. I forget. Is he shy guy or boo? This is a boo. Yeah. yeah is there another one named shy guy? Or am I thinking? Yeah. He, he's that's the, the one with the mask. Yeah. Red uh, guy okay. with a little mask. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then uh, was there anything you wanted to plug? Oh, sure. Um, yeah, I write for bloodygoodhorror.com. I contribute to that. Um, I think right now, I don't know when this episode comes out, if it'll be there. So, you know, go to the website, find what I've written on recently. There's some reviews and articles, but I'm working on a new um, video game one to talk about three video games that I've just been playing recently. I wanted to play enough of them to be able to talk about them, but um I'm excited. I hoping to work on that this week. And so hopefully by the episode, you can go check out my click baby three mm. video games. You should play today. <laughs> nice. Cool. And then uh, tell us about your history with uh, Tales from the Crypt. Yeah. So this was my first Tales from the Crypt episode. Really? Oh, ever. Okay. <laughs> yes. so your listened, history. You, you said you've listened to every, all of our episodes. We I've haven't watched Yes, wow. I've listened to every episode and never watched the show. Um, not in, like in in any avoidance no, or no, anything. No. It's just I don't tend to like watch a lot of TV in general. And um, I just I think y'all described the episode so well that I just kind of can visualize it. I want to watch more because I did enjoy what I saw. So I'm a little younger than y'all. Um, yeah humble brag uh, but, <laughs> we're wiser uh, humble brag <laughs> but um yeah so i this i don't know when these were live um like the 90s i was probably Early, too young yeah. but also i didn't have hbo that was not a thing that we had we did not nope. have anything more my parents did not pay for anything extra when it came to like television or movies or anything like that. So it was never really even something on my radar until, you know, getting older. I always get this mixed up with, um, what's the other one? The Tales creep the show. Time. Yeah. Creep show. Um, get hmm. those mixed up with creep show. Um, well, but a, yeah. I mean, to your point though, I never had the HBO growing up either, but they did play them on uh, syndication. If you stayed up mm-hmm. late enough. Which again, I think at the time you were probably too young. Probably to, uh, too young. Yeah, to I'm an up, 88 but... baby, so oh, yeah. this you was were... probably like but this, you were about four years old when this episode came Jody out. Jody just I looks just... like he's in pain. I just <laughs> had an expression I... of pain. Yeah, it just happened. I, it's I okay. My it. back hurts. You know, I'm already. I'm there too, y'all. <laughs> um, well, you can go to your chiropractor. Your uh, <laughs> what's it called? It chirohactor. Chirohactor. <laughs> yeah so this it gave me a lot of vibes though and why I want to watch more was I really liked watching the goosebumps and Mm -hmm. are you afraid of the dark and this really gave me more of like an adult vibe of that so I feel like um those shows were I was always really scared of horror but those were like just enough that it wasn't too scary I don't know are you afraid of the dark used to scare the shit out of me um (laughs) there's some scary episodes that intro i don't know if y'all have seen that intro was terrifying um (laughs) it's been a while i want to check this out um more from the beginning um because i it felt to me like um one of those episodes but much gorier with much more adult content yeah all right, well, let's get into it. Uh, tonight we're talking about episode season four, Strung Along, which premiered on September 2nd, 1992. Jody, give us your plot synopsis. All right, so we open up on the Crypt Keeper on a rack, getting stretched out by the aforementioned Cairo Hactor, as he says. And uh, then when we get into the actual episode, uh, we open on an old timey black and white puppet show, like a kid's show with you know, the cheesy jokes and all this stuff. And then this smiling host comes on and tells the kids to come back again. And then we see that host watching himself on TV, uh, obviously years later. Uh, This guy's name is Joseph Renfield. And uh, he was a famous TV 
puppet guy uh, make kids shows back in the day. And then outside, Joseph's beautiful, much younger wife, Ellen, is swimming around in the pool with her friend. And Joseph is uh, later down in the basement carving a puppet head and talking to himself as his puppet, Coco. And there, he does this a lot. You get Coco voice uh, that is also his voice. Uh, Ellen comes down and invites him to go swim, but he declines and kind of acts like he's jealous of her friend. She, he, she even says like, are you jealous of my female friends now too? So there, that's obviously a thread through their relationship. He says he's just depressed and she asks if he's taken his meds and she's worried that he doesn't take care of himself. And honestly, at this point, like it seems like a pretty decent relationship despite the big age gap. But this is Tales from the Crypt. We'll get into it. Uh, Joseph gets a letter in the mail about being involved in a tribute to the golden age of television to do his act with Coco. And he tells her in bed at night, uh, that he wants to do a new routine, but Ellen's worried about him pushing himself too hard. Comes up over and over. He's had heart trouble in the past. Maybe he's had a heart attack in the past. Either way, he can't do too much. Um, she wants to get someone to help him. And she says she'll ask her acting teacher if he knows anyone. And uh, he's in a good mood and they start making out as the uh, screen fades to black. The next day, Ellen brings a young guy named David to Joseph's workshop to help. Uh, he grew up on the, sh on the shows that Joseph did, just like Ellen did, just again, pointing out that age gap. While he's exploring, Coco comes out and blows up a balloon. But it's actually, obviously, it's Joseph. It's not Coco by himself. We don't have, like, living puppets this early in the episode. That'd be ridiculous. Uh, but no, he comes out, blows up a balloon. Uh, he introduces himself. Uh, he asks how David knows Ellen, and you could tell there's a little bit of that, like, why does this young guy know my wife? Again, that little jealous thread. He doesn't actually know her, though. They uh, just met through the class, and he, he they're not even in the class together. Uh, Joseph asks David if he's ever worked with marionettes. He says no, but he has done animatronics, but he wants to learn from a master. Later, Ellen is on the phone talking to someone named Rick, a friend from class, uh, is what she tells David. And Ellen says uh, that this David guy seems pushy, but Joseph's okay with him. He likes him. Ellen leaves for acting class. And then Coco talks to Joseph again, says, are you thinking what I'm thinking? And, no, you. she wouldn't do that to us. Obviously, we are planting some seeds of that jealousy again. Joseph and David are preparing for the show and David is having trouble, but Joseph helps him out. When Ellen brings lunch down, uh, Joseph asks her what she thought about the lines, and she says, they're okay. Finds out that David has actually written some new lines, and uh, she gets really angry that he's updating the material because uh, Joseph is this Emmy winner for writing, doesn't need him updating the material. She storms off, and Joseph kind of holds on to his chest like he's having a little bit of pain from this emotional encounter. David asks him what's wrong, and Joseph tells him that he's afraid that Ellen is seeing someone in her acting class. David offers to swing by her acting class on Wednesday to check things out. And Joseph says, no, 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 the class is on Tuesday. David says, no, they moved it a year ago. There's no class on Tuesday. And Ellen never misses a class. So then Joseph knows something is really up. Um, as David is leaving, Ellen tells uh, him that he shouldn't come back tomorrow, offers to pay him off. She's like weirdly aggressive towards him. Um, David asks her how long she's been cheating. And they start yelling at each other. And uh, Joseph intervenes and Ellen says to fire him. Joseph says he can't do it without him. David leaves. Ellen starts yelling about not having friends. And uh, then she leaves. And then Coco tells Joseph to go check into everything. He digs through her dresser and finds a love note from Rick about last night. Then Joseph sits alone drinking vodka and talking to Coco. Joseph says he'll divorce her, but Coco says to take matters into his own hands. And David is holding a carving knife, saying he can't do it and crying as he falls asleep. He wakes up at his workbench and Coco is not there, just his strings hanging down. There's a scream from upstairs and Joseph runs up the stairs to find Coco on top of Ellen. She's covered in blood and he's stabbing her over and over again. And upon this sight, he has a heart attack. And I thought he died instantly, but he apparently was still alive for a little bit, just staring into space. Uh, but he falls down. And then David walks out of a room and he has a remote in his hands, tells Joseph, sorry. This Coco is an animatronic. 
and that whole scene was staged. David touches Ellen's face and she sits up laughing and asking if he's dead yet. And that's when Ellen introduces Joseph to Rick. David has been Rick all alone. And they say with Joseph's money, Rick will do well as a puppeteer. And at that point, I think Joseph dies. And Ellen asks uh, Rick where he put the real Coco. And he says it's under the bed and he goes to get it. But Coco isn't there. When Rick stands up, Coco is on the bed with a knife in his hand and he slashes Rick's throat. At this point, Ellen comes back in and sees Rick sitting on the bed and says, why are you still here? You need to get out of here. And he raises up, pulled by strings like a puppet. And he raises his hand up and stabs her. The police come in and both Rick and Ellen are on this, it's like a four poster bed that has the big like canopy on top. And they're strung up from that canopy bed on strings with a creepy Joseph puppet up at the top, pulling the strings. It's not Coco. Joseph has become a, I don't really know what happened, but they were killed no. by a puppet and turned into puppets. All right. I don't <laughs> have to know the details. There was a puppet murder going on. And that's the end. Puppet oh. murder. Of a murder. Okay, thank you, uh, Whitney. Uh, there you go, you're off of mute. Um, why don't you tell us what you th thought of this episode? This episode for me, so it kind of started slow, um, but you know, thinking of it now from beginning to end and hearing those synopsis, it's perfectly. I was very um, convinced, you know, like I was at first thinking, like, why is this woman being like, their relationship seemed so nice. Um, he didn't really seem that jealous. So like, I was just kind of like, where is she coming from? Like he just didn't even seem that jealous to me. Um, and then when we got into the twists and it was just like twist, 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 twist. It was just like, oh my God, the puppet's real. No, the puppet's not real, but the puppet's real. And it was just like back and <laughs> forth. And I was just like, oh my God, oh my God. Um, Cause I was not expecting like so much to, to change that quickly, like all at the end. And, um, that it was just really fun. Um, I loved seeing the puppet just like sitting on top of stabbing her. It was so fun. That puppet's very creepy. Um, they're both kind of creepy, uh, marionettes, but um, I even liked the jokes about the cowabunga and the hang 10 that they had. And I loved how excited this guy was to, you know, get back into it. He was just so excited. Um, there was a point where I thought that maybe she was like poisoning him um, because I've listened again to so many episodes. I was just like, oh, she keeps talking about him taking his medicine. And I was like, is this medicine like going to give Makes him sense. a heart attack? Is that what she's trying to do? Um because she seemed so concerned for him. I was convinced they loved each other. And then, yeah, I, I, I was fooled by everyone. Those people could totally fool me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was so gullible thinking like that, that guy was the friend and he was going to help and all these things, of course, like I should have seen it coming, but yeah. I didn't. So. If you watch, yeah, if you watch enough of these, you start to yeah. suss out, like yeah. you don't know exactly how, how, how it is right. going to check out, but you know, like, okay, the new guy, you know, it's only going one of two ways. Either the the um, older guy is going to like kill them by mistake, or they're going to frame him, or you know. Right. Yeah, I should any, have known. Like listening any, to all the episodes, but any, it got me. <laughs> anytime you see a happy couple, assume they're not actually happy. They have <laughs> right. something going on. Someone's yeah. got ulterior motives. But then, the, but again, then there's the three three in the crowd where it kind of like subverts that. Yeah, you know. no, they're they're the occasional happy couple. There's one couple that uh, you know they turned to cannibalism and became mm -hmm. a better couple for it. <laughs> good for them. Good for them. Everyone has to work things out their own way. Hashtag good for them. <laughs> uh, Jody, what did you think of this episode? Yeah, I thought this was a pretty fun one. I I really enjoyed the uh, Coco movements and scenes uh mm -hmm. i want to know how he blew up a balloon with a puppet too like yes. I, I i feel like i needed an explanation i'm sure it's just there i'm sure it's an air hose it was so right cool so that cool. was very cool it was very well done yeah but yeah no it, i enjoyed the puppet stuff i like the whole like psychological like 
him sitting with a bottle of vodka talking to himself in puppet voice like yeah that's that's how i spiral out of control you know i'm, I'm waiting for that day <laughs> that me and a sock puppet are just sitting around going it's gonna be her fault yeah you know I mean, you know it's gonna be you and that like benny loves you uh doll in your background yeah. or like you know you're gonna talk, start talking to your vhs tapes they're all gonna start talking to you the skeletons See, are gonna move on your door <laughs> so yeah i, I I upset my 15 year old about an hour ago because I'm in here preparing for the podcast. I'm watching the episode and I suddenly come into the living room. I say, Ben, do we have any puppets? Cause I really wanted to have a puppet like pop up halfway through this podcast. <laughs> and he just looked at me and went, what do you mean? Do we have any, why are you asking me about puppets at 10 o'clock at night? What is going on here? Uh, that sounds pretty normal for your house. I mean, <laughs> sure, exactly. I don't know why he's even surprised. This is a very normal conversation. For your house. Yeah, no, like, I have to admit, before this episode, I'm over here looking through my socks going, can I make a sock puppet for one? <laughs> I was going to yeah, say. I, I, was prepared. <laughs> I was prepared, but. Benny's he, right there. He, he doesn't puppet, though. There's no, um, there's no hole in the back. I checked. I actually picked up my Benny, too. You can make a hole. Talk. I'm surprised you you always have so many cool socks. I'm surprised you don't have a sock that actually could be a puppet like itself probably with the could, sock. Probably could. I, think, I think we got a business idea here. Yeah. That's yeah, sock, sock puppets. puppets. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so as, as all of this probably points to, I, puppets, I really enjoy puppets in general in movies, like horror movies. Uh, I, I'm a big puppet fan. And so I was a sucker for this episode. You got the puppets, you have this weird relation and that, that whole ending with the stabbing puppet and then people being turned into puppet. Like I just, it was awesome. I love that. It was a lot of fun. It was a, a great end to this one. And even though I, what, what episode are we on now? 52, 53, 52. 52, even though we've watched this many episodes and I should know what to expect. They did throw me a few curveballs. Like I always suspect the wife, if there's any kind of strife or the husband or whoever. But at the beginning, at least, I thought, okay, we actually have another like semi happy couple on this show. And I thought maybe things were going to go some way I wasn't expecting. But uh, yeah, no, that like most marriages on Tales from the Crypt, they have problems, <laughs> severe problems. <laughs> That's what it is. We need a spinoff with a marriage counselor to talk yeah. about all the ways that they that these couples should have been handling their relationships. Yeah, seriously. Now that that can be our dad advice today. You know, if you get to the point where your relationship problems can only be solved by faking a puppet murder, your your relation you, like you should have gone to therapy earlier. Yeah. Than that Couple like it, once once puppet murder enters your mind, it's time to uh, talk to somebody. <laughs> Just uh, say no to puppet murder. That should be yeah. on, put down the billboard. <laughs> yeah, if, just if for for everyone listening if if you're ever sitting around one night and you're like i have so many problems what could i do puppet murder that that's time to stop like just stop that line of thinking move on find it's a better it's a better about. help ad yes <laughs> Yeah. Um, yes. Contact your counselor on BetterHelp immediately. <laughs> have you yeah. Have you guys been hey, getting I'm that? I'm thinking puppet murder again. <laughs> have you been seeing that? Getting that one on YouTube for BetterHelp. With this woman kind of just walking around her apartment, like having these random thoughts, and then one of them's like, "Maybe I'm gay," and I'm like, "It's just couched between all these other random thoughts. It's just the way it flows. It's just really, I don't know. It was just seemed really awkward to me. I'm depressed. No. I feel anxious. Maybe I'm gay. Puppy. Yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's so it read. I'm like, wait, those things don't always. Should I, should I think yeah. a puppet murder? You know, all <laughs> the, the normal thoughts people have when they're stressed. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, um, anyway, good episode. Lots of fun. I love the fact that Kevin Yeager directed this one because yeah. he is a puppet man and he directed a puppet episode. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'm going to hop in. I didn't love this episode. Uh, it was just lacking a little bit of energy. And this is what we've talked about where, like, sure. there's an episode where this, not much is really going for it, but if you get a really good performance, it really picks things up. I kind of needed that. Like the Zach Galligan, the Dave Rick character, uh, he, he really needs to bring some more energy to it or some wackiness or something over the top. And that, it was just kind of missing something. Um, and the, yeah, I didn't quite figure out what the, exactly what was going to happen. But it, again, it was kind of like, it's not like those, um, those pick your own ending stories where you're like, you kind of, there's like three different options. And you kind of know, like, okay, it's either he's all in his head and he's going to kill them by accident or they're plotting against him and they're going to frame him or they're going to 
get him to have a heart attack. Yeah, I kind of, you kind of knew like multiple choice which ways it was going to go. And this kind, of, this kind of felt like a bit of a remix of a lot of other episodes that we've seen, um, which is fine. It just wasn't, I didn't find any particular, anything particularly original. And it, it was, it was well executed. The effects are really good. So yeah, this is, but it didn't really, the, the, some of the parts didn't, weren't greater than the whole in the end for me. Yeah, I think it really knocked it at the ending, but the lead mm-hmm. up to it, just I didn't mm-hmm. really understand why the David character was there. Like, I didn't understand what he was going to help with going to the TV show. Like, I feel like the potential TV show got dropped. Like, yeah. I don't even think that mm-hmm. needed to be a thing to have this David character introduced. So, um, yeah, I think I agree that it kind of, um, but that, and I, I was kind of met on it until the end. So for me, the ending yeah. did save it overall. Yeah. Um, but it just like yeah. went to 11 a little too late, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But like, and again, the ending was still kind of confusing. Like what it, he, he turned into a puppet. Like is, there's no, there was never anything like supernatural about this episode that would indicate anything weird happening. So how did that happen? But, what happened? But didn't the puppet, oh yeah, that's right. Because he's, it's the puppet at the end is the guy. It's not Coco. That was weird. I did not understand. Yeah, I don't that. understand. I, if it, it had like been Coco. Coco, I would have liked been like, yeah, like, of course it if was he, Coco. If he popped out at the end dressed as Coco, that would have been <laughs> that would been really sick. <laughs> he's like, oh, he's like acting like a marionette, like on his own volition because he's had a heart attack or like he's I've had been some Coco sort of like, all along. Yeah, or something like that. He's like, I'm I Coco, Coco now. Was alive. I guess I thought Coco was alive. I don't know. That, but... That's what I'm saying. I can't figure out. Did Coco come alive? But then why is he in the just as a doll in the end? Did Coco put him up there and dress him? I don't quite understand yeah. the logistics of it or what it's really supposed <laughs> to be. It's cool. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not denying that. And the it, effects are good. This is one by the end. It's best not to think too much about yeah. it, which unfortunately is what we do on this show. So it kind of, once you start thinking too hard, it's like, oh no, wait, wait, that doesn't make any sense. And right. Right. There, there are all kinds, the whole thing with like David being her real boyfriend, there were several interactions they had where they argued where Joseph wasn't around. So I didn't understand what they were like. Yeah. Or, or I thought they were being like extra loud just in case. Yeah, I thought they were being extra loud, so maybe Joseph might hear. But again, they didn't really, they didn't really sell that. Yeah, like um, when she's like, "You're gonna let him talk to me that way." Like it was the, mm-hmm. all that acting. Maybe it was like overacting. I will say the idea to kill him with uh, by scaring him and ha- making him have a heart attack was pretty smart. Yeah, um, I don't know until that he, it went sideways because like did, he did seem though like. All it took was a little bit of stress to get some heart pain. I mean, you could have just jumped out from behind a door when he was walking <laughs> in and go, boo. My wife loves to do that to my kids. Like when they're, when she hears them on the other side of a door, like wait for them to open it and then jump mm-hmm. out of them. Like that would have killed Joseph. Joseph didn't need much. He was close. That's probably what the, um, um alan wanted to do but then rick slash david was like no i really like puppets i want to do this like (laughs) i can do this and he said like he was kind of making fun of animatronic things and like Mm -hmm. (laughs) so maybe that was david being like i gotta prove myself If they worked at that angle a little harder, it was like, oh, I guess animatronics are better now, huh? Right. right. Like something like that. That would have been kind of like, that would kind of tie that a little bit more together. Or if it was like <laughs> resentful, it's just like. Uh, who's the puppet master now? Yeah. Who's the master of puppets? <laughs> yeah. I, I uh, like I like the idea that Rick and Ellen had a conversation at one point. She's like, I want you to kill my husband. And uh, he says, let me run something by you. Puppet murder. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Bobby have you Murray? heard of have you heard of hydraulics and the uh, <laughs> animatronics and um uh so yeah let's get into this a little bit. What is cool is thinking again that this is Kevin Yeager, who is you know a you know master in effects, especially again, especially animatronics. He created the, the Chucky doll. Um he made the Crypt Keeper. He made the Crypt Keeper, okay. so he's the one behind all those like servos and animatronics and things. Um, so he's been he, that, that's just totally his wheelhouse. He was he did uh Friday the 13th, the final chapter. He did Nightmare on Elm Street 2, 3, and 4. At least he did parts of it. Um, he also directed the episode of Tales of the Crypt Lower Birth, the one with uh, the Crypt Keeper's parents. 
Uh, mm-hmm. Great episode, Whitney, puppets. to watch. Yeah, you More should watch puppets. that one. That's a good one. Yeah, I think I um, remember that episode, and that one sounded really fun because it was when he was like a baby at the yeah. end, right? Yeah, 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 I remember y'all talking about that one. That one sounds fun. And then um, as we're recording, as the interview hasn't come out, but we did an interview with Todd Masters, and we talked a lot about Hellraiser Bloodlines, which technically Kevin Yeager directed originally and then it was kind of taken away and he did a alan smithy scenario where he kind of took his name off and it was just kind of a whole mess but uh, that is another movie he more or less directed um but he hasn't done a ton of directing but again he's also he did like um bones the tv show he's on like 230 episodes so he's just you know he's just doing stuff non-stop um and he's just you know again if you're in if you're the way that like uh what was it dick smith and like all those old school like mm-hmm. makeup effects artists he's kind of him and todd and uh savini are all like the 80s 70s like new the, the, that generation yeah but Ke- kevin's still out there doing stuff mm-hmm. too he did some effects for bill and ted face the music and that mm-hmm. was just a couple of years ago right um and then i think he has like a company that's probably doing a lot of stuff that he's like more stepping back and supervising yeah um, so again, that adds another fun level to this, where he's kind of showing off again with the balloon gag, and then again with the uh, little pu- the, the Coco puppet, you know, stabbing on on Ellen. Um, he's kind of flexing a little bit there, which is kind of fun. Um, so the older gentleman, the star, is played by Donald O'Connor. This guy, he's been acting since he was he was acting since 1937. So again, he did this almost 60 years into his career. Um, he was in Singing in the Rain and What's Cooking. Um, you know, again, classic old movies. He did six movies in 1944. He had six movies come out. Oh my God. People are talking about like, oh, um, Jenna Ortega's in so many movies right now. No, this guy did six movies. That's like one every two months. 1944, yeah. too, is such a, you know, post-World War II so, or mid mid middle, right? Yeah. Like, right in the dang middle of it. <laughs> yeah. Just like, I'm going to do all these movies. <laughs> Right, well, that's like People the studio system. Movies. They're just probably popping full of amphetamines and just putting them on set. Who knows? <laughs> um, so Ellen, his wife, is played by Patricia. And you can correct me on the pronunciation. I can Charbonneau. Sounds it's good to me. Um, she was in the Michael Mann, Manhunter. She was in Brain Dead. She had a little role in Robocop 2. And she was in She's All That. And then, of course... The David slash Rick characters played by Zach Galligan uh, from Gremlins One and Two. Wax works. Was he the kid? He's the the teenage kid. The teenage uh, boy that Gizmo. Oh my god! I didn't recognize. Billy, yeah. It's been a long time since I've seen Gremlins, but. It shouldn't be a long time since you see Gremlins. Gremlins needs to be seen. On yeah, the right I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll watch it this year. And uh, watch Waxworks. That's a really fun. Movie. Oh, Waxworks is so fun. Um, he was in Hellraiser 3, but like in the background in like that bar massacre, which is such a fun scene. That's by far the best part of that movie. Um, and then he was also recently in Hatchet 3. Now he's in uh, this year Gremlin's Secret of the Mogwai, which is an animated feature. I guess it's coming on HBO Ooh. Max. Yep. He's not oh, playing wow. Billy as far as what Comic Con told us this weekend. I think it's a prequel, like how where the Magwai came from or something like something that. Something like that. He's just doing a, a random other character, but that's I'm, cool. I'm, cool. I'm an involved. easy sell for Gremlins too. Well, since we haven't had anything for, yeah. forever. Um, so yeah, it's a fun cast. Again, I, I would like to see a, a bigger performance by Zach, probably. I think that's where you'd want that. Um, or David O'Connor. I mean, he does. David O'Connor does a good, quote, traditional acting job. But again, this is Tales. You want to ham it up a little bit. I um, think. I think one thing I did like about it, though, is this one played it pretty close to the vest through most of it. It was fairly serious. Like it. It felt like a uh, like a drama type intrigue. You know, mm-hmm. there's and then all of a sudden, clown murder, like or puppet murder. Like it just it it builds up like a normal like problem that this couple's having and then all of a sudden it goes freaking nuts at the end and so i think that's what sold it for me is i kind of like that we got no hints that we were getting there other than, yeah, other than sitting around with his vodka bottle talking to himself like things were fairly normal other than that and it's tales from the crib so you know things are right yeah things are going to do something yeah all right, Joe. Do you most want to give it cat, real quick? Are most like episodes this small of like a group of people because they're only yeah. three actors? Okay, 
Yeah. yeah. There's usually like three main ones, and then there might be again like a cop and the paramedic kind of in the background. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So this is it that's really pretty, small. Again, it's only 26 minutes of right. actual. And then you put the creaky browns other like two, three minutes. Mm-hmm. So, that's fair. Um, so again, yeah, so you have to really utilize what you have. You can't just have someone walk on and give, you know, a cool performance. You only right. have three people. Um, so you, all three of them have to really in sync and going for it. Um, all right, Jody, give us the original comic comparison. Okay, so this is a cool comic. I like this one. Uh, Vault of Horror number 33, which was uh, October 10th, 1953 is when this one came out. Script by Bill Gaines and Al Feldstein. Those are the big guys at uh, EC. Art by Graham Ingalls, uh, big name there. So in this one, we have a puppeteer named Tony. And we open, he believes he's dying. And he starts flashing back to kind of his history with his puppets when he first made them. Uh, Apparently, he made these puppets. He did some shows and he got super famous. He got really rich because of his act. And, you know, we're talking 1953 here. So, you know, there were people actually making a ton of money doing puppet stuff. I mean, there was a a guy uh, named Edgar Bergen who did uh, ventriloquism on the radio, which I don't even know how that works. How do you do ventriloquism on the radio? You don't even have to keep your mouth still. (laughs) Well, maybe it's more like Phil Hendry, where he has a conversation with himself doing different voices. But either way, you know, people got really famous doing puppet stuff. And so did this guy, Tony, in the comic. Uh, so he got very famous, very rich because of his act, but he was lonely. And he meets this woman named Nora. They fall in love and get married. And it says that Tony, like, entertained kings and presidents. So he was that high up in the world of puppets, I guess. Uh, but then he got diagnosed with some kind of heart trouble and told he could not work again. He had to keep things calm. He He would... He is too weak. Uh, too weak to even, puppet. Doctor said even an emotional <laughs> shock could kill him. So okay. he he was he was Very pretty fragile. Fragile. Okay. So the bills piled up. They spent all their savings, and that's when Nora tells him that she never actually loved him. She just just in it for the money, and she yells at him, and that causes a heart attack. And she kind of walks out laughing, leaving him there. So he's laying there on the ground dying that's back to where we started and he's just talking to his puppets like you're all i have left i don't i'm I'm all by myself and i'm gonna die here alone and he falls asleep at some point um and then while he's asleep he gets woken up by nora coming back into the room kind of in shadow and she comes up to him and uh she has tears on her face and she's like holding him and he goes, oh, I, I knew you really loved me. Like, I knew, you, I knew you didn't mean all that. I knew you really loved me. And then he dies, not all alone. But I'm going to actually read you the caption here for the last panel, because it is so cool. <laughs> Said, but Nora had died much earlier, violently. She lay with the blood that had been mistaken for tears now dried on her cheeks. She lay limply beside Tony, the rigid dismembered section of her body held together by tiny hinges screwed into the joint bones. Countless fine, almost invisible strings ran from each movable section to the ceiling beam over the bed. The marionette rack was empty. The grinning marionettes were found sprawled upon the beam. Nora's strings tied to their lifeless hands. So in this version, he was sad and lonely and he didn't have anyone left in the world. So his marionettes found his wife, murdered her, chopped her into pieces and turned her into a marionette so that he wouldn't have to die alone. He, they made her come into the room and like hug him while he died. That's, that's freaking awesome, man. That's fucking oh God. That is so cool. There's so, some nice puppets. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just, I love this whole thing. Like, the guy had such a connection to his puppets that they saw him dying and they, like, went to help him. Yeah, rather through, than, like, through surrounding. Through puppet murder. Through puppet murder. Puppet murder. <laughs> it always comes back to puppet it murder. It always comes back to it. But yeah, no, I thought this was a really cool comic. I I think the comic is actually more dynamic than the show in this case. Yeah. It doesn't have all that stuff about like the comeback or all this stuff. It's just this guy kind of 
sadly living his life again and then the puppets take over and i think that was really cool it's a very sinister kind of end because you don't see anything to indicate that that's what's going on when nora comes back you just kind of see her in the shadow she's not talking so it's a little strange but she hugs him he says you know i feel the tears on your face you know i can tell that you're sorry you don't have to say anything and i knew you loved me i, I just knew it and so then he dies with a smile on his face and then we find out blood with everywhere she had blood running down her face she'd been murdered and hacked up and the puppets were controlling the whole thing very very cool very cool story and i i kind of wish yeah yeah i i i liked that story better than the one we got i enjoyed a lot of things about the story but i like that story better mm-hmm. yeah that's a really cool twist and i feel like that would have been really awesome to see maybe it was just too hard to well, they always feel like they have to fill out, pad the episodes a little yeah. bit. Right. I think yeah. they could have pulled that off, though. Spent a little time on his puppet career and, you know, the disintegrating relationship with his wife. They, they could have made this one work, I think, with the mm. original story. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that sounds like a lot more original. But the, uh, well, Maybe they just needed some way to, like, bring the puppet thing into the 90s. Because we're talking early 90s here. Like, who's going to be famous for puppets? Mm-hmm. Other yeah. than Kevin Yeager. And I mean, making the note about animatronics and like being outdated and like how it's like, I have to come back. I have to, you know, update my act to what's going to be funny. And I was excited for him because I was like, good. I'm glad he's open to updating Mm -hmm. his act. I was like, that's good. Uh, And then he died. (laughs) Or did he? We don't know. Okay. What I would have wanted would be a animatronic versus puppet fight. But like, so like a like puppet uh, a puppet a puppet uh, Joseph versus a animatronic David slash Rick corpse, like battle okay. bots. But yeah, battle like bots. Marionette <laughs> wars. Yeah, exactly. Like they can that. use like the string to wrap around the guy's neck. You know. Yeah, some guys yeah. just up there like this and like <laughs> fiddling, and he's got a little knife, and the puppet's like this, coming back and forth with his knife. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just something, something about puppets doing violence. Like it's, it's entertaining. Yeah, I love, I love the puppet master movies. I love Chucky. Like it's fun stuff. It always makes me happy when small things that shouldn't move move and fight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like small soldiers. Small soldiers. Yeah, I was about to say. Small soldiers. <laughs> Y'all ever see the movie Dolls? That's yes. not no. a doll. Oh, I that's love a that. creepy poster. That's that, a really poster, poster. that poster haunted me as a kid. Like yeah. I remember seeing that's that in the video store. Creepy. It freaked me out. But oh, it's a fun movie. I love it. All right, yeah. let's do our episode rank uh, rating. Um, so Whitney, we do zero to five. You do half points. Five being the best, zero being the worst. You're our guest. So you get to start. Okay. Um, I'm gonna give this a four. It's my first episode, so maybe, you know, I'm a little more positive on it because of that. Um, It took me a bit to enjoy it, but I really just like the wackiness of the Mm -hmm. last two minutes of it because it just like flip-flop back and forth with so many twists that it just was like, what happened? I love this. So, um, (laughs) yeah, I feel good with my four rating. Nothing wrong with that. Judy? I'm going to go just a little lower only, but I think I probably would have gone to four just watching the episode, but then after reading the comic and realizing what I missed out on, I, I, I was left wanting a little bit more. So I'm going to go three and a half for this one. I just, I, if I had had the comic version, I mean, that could have been a four or five, like it's such a cool story, but with seeing, seeing the comparison there, I, I, I have to drop it down just a little bit. I do love that end though. Yeah, I, I'm a three on this one, and it's just nothing, not much new plot wise. But again, the effects are really cool, so I'm giving it up for that. Um, not the worst by far, not the worst we've seen this season, oh, especially, no. um, but not as high as we've had other ones. All right, well, that moves us right along uh, to our Uncle Al's an- anecdotes. Mondo edit in here. All right, and we're back. All right, Whitney, you, uh, you've you taken on a couple of roles for us. This is going to become the Whitney Show. Um, now, me being, you know, the simple uh, Metallica lover I am for Song of the Day, I would have just called it Master Puppets and called it a day. And uh, But you, you, you go the extra mile. So uh, show us what you got. 
Okay, thank you. Um, so I was really hoping to do a Led Zeppelin song just to piss Mondo off so that <laughs> he has like a Led Zeppelin song in his song of the day, but I didn't do that. Um, personally, my music tastes are fairly different from Mondo's. I'm very much a chill wave. And I know Mondo loves that too. We both own Stardew Valley soundtracks um, on vinyl, but um, there's a really popular song right now because of a show called Stranger Things. So today's <laughs> song of the day is Master of Puppets by Metallica. <laughs> yes, there we go. As soon as you were like, Whitney, do the song of the day. And I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? And then I started it and then it was puppets. And I'm like, Master of Puppets. Um, yeah, <laughs> okay, never... well, apparently. <laughs> yeah, and I, before, before we started, I was talking to Jason. I said, we should do Master of Puppets. So we are all on board with this one how could you not i mean i've listened to it a ton because i've listened to the stranger things soundtrack mm -hmm. i have yep. not heard this song prior so but we did keep it metal for mondo so i think yep. he'll be very proud of us <laughs> no i mean the app the album master puppets is probably my top five albums of all time easily um it's just it's one of those albums that's been in my car since high school like any time, I, I, since I got it, I remember that I remember getting used from the record store, putting the, the, the CD store, putting it, you know, in my in my car. And I don't think it's ever left. Um, oh, nice. And then every time I get a new car, I just you know move that one CD. There's like a three or four CDs that I just move into you know my car whenever I get a new one. That one and uh, Beastie Boys, Check Your Head. Mm, nice. Um, I'm surprised your CDs still play. Like I don't know what I was doing with my CDs. <laughs> As a like middle school, high school kid, I think those. God, I don't remember when MP3s came out, but I was CDs all through. They, those things, like I got to the point where you know I downloaded things that had like weird noises in them. Mm. So when I hear the song without my weird noise or my skip or like my little but uh, like I think it's weird. I'm like, oh, <laughs> why did it play normal? Where's the weird chirp that oh, I no, have on yeah. train? <laughs> there were definitely. Uh nicks and things and in, in, in some of the songs that you know you just kind of go through them but you didn't know any better so <laughs> it's charming <laughs> it's charming what are these clear audio qualities we have to listen to now yeah well yeah i remember there's like songs i only ever heard on the radio then i finally you know got spotify and listened to them there i'm like oh that's what the song's supposed to sound like <laughs> <laughs> or songs right. that you knew all the words to because you heard them on the radio and then you mm -hmm. listen to the real version like oh there's a lot of swearing in this song Oh my god, I'm listening I feel to this that. with my kids and I'm not like, that prepared. Oh, so this is what Eminem really sounds like. <laughs> there, there's something about hearing your kids sing a song that you used to listen to and makes you reevaluate what the words are. You're like, oh damn, maybe, maybe that one's not good for the car anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, song of the day, Metallica's Master of Puppets. We're all just hive minding uh, three that out of one. three. <laughs> recommend <laughs> we all came to that one separately <laughs> all right and then uh part of whitney's takeover you're doing some trivia for us yeah um so one thing i'm working on is kind of a secret but i'll tease it a little bit is hopefully um my own show that i'll be hosting at least one of but hopefully more and part of that show is um trivia for the guest so you brought up kind of like hey do you want to do some trivia for today so i have three questions for you about the movie demon knight <laughs> so oh, okay. it's gonna be tricky because we i've done a lot i've done a lot of exactly. uh, deep diving on demon knight so yeah the whole point is it's a movie that you know pretty well so i'm excited to see if you can get these probably yes but let's see mm -hmm. so Question one for you both. You can both, you know, phone a friend to each other. Um, you both probably know that Demon Knight was released in 1995, but what day was the movie released on? It was in January, if I'm not mistaken. Was it January the 13th? Was it Friday the 13th kind of thing? Yes. <laughs> Let's say it needed to have some kind of significance. Right. Which is also like our friend Natalie's birthday, or at least like right around Natalie's birthday. Oh, wow. And she likes this movie a lot too. Well, yeah. She yep. went to see, I think, other. I remember she said she saw other on or right 
after her I think birthday. on her birthday maybe yeah. oh that's so cool I did see this at a tear Tuesday um <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a place that's doing like a weekend I think it's next weekend they're doing like four movies from the 90s and I'm really jealous they're doing Tremors they're doing From Dust Till Dawn they're doing Demon Knight and I forget what the fourth one is but I'm like all these movies are I was going to say, it wouldn't, it wouldn't even matter what the fourth one was. I'd be there for it. Yeah, I know. It's, it's somewhere on the East Coast. Back? So. That's so long. Well, no, it's, it's, demon, it's like two movies one night and then two movies the next night. Oh, okay, yeah. But, I um, see people like the Alamo will do these like Harry Potter marathons uh, and Star so, Wars marathons. And I'm like, I don't want to sit there that long. Like, that sounds, I'm like when they did, really tired. Yeah, like when the Avengers Endgame came out and they did like a Marvel marathon, I'm like, that's like two days. No. Um, the one you know how much money you would spend on concessions? Like, if you were, <laughs> oh my God, I already spend like $40 when I'm on, built for one movie, let alone three to eight. No, thank you. Yeah, the uh, Beverly Center here, the Beverly Theater here, the one that's owned by Tarantino, they, they did a um, Nightmare on Elm Street marathon that started at like 10, 8, 10 p.m. or something like that. Yeah. And um, I, I read about it after the fact. I'm like, how long could I have made it, though? <laughs> if you don't sleep like snoring. me, you can make it a long time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Question two. We're doing good so far. Mm-hmm. What is the green slime in the movie? Joe, do you know? You what is it guess? made of? Yes. Like, what is, okay. what did the effects team use? I think I remember slime? reading something about it. It's uh, the glow sticks, right? Like the glowy stuff. Yes. The the liquid from a glow stick. Yeah, like, yes. just like in Predator, which I think they, that and mixed with like KY jelly or something. Yeah. I honestly, I feel like that stuff should be toxic. Like, I feel like, 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 it that, right? like, like, I feel like it's like mercury. Like, you should not yeah. be yeah. touching that stuff. <laughs> okay, last question. If y'all can get three for free, three, you can, you know, keep your title of their podcast. We win, um, we win podcast. You win podcasting. Uh, what does the crypt keeper say at the very end of this movie? Does he say uh, that's entertainment? Yes. Now that's entertainment. Good yeah. job. Which is, you thank aced you. it. Which is actually interesting is this episode ended kind of similar in a similar manner with the uh, Crypt Keeper's head getting chopped off and landing in the basket. I forget this is something else, yeah. but. So much good laughing too from him. Mm-hmm. So oh yes, that's words. your trivia and y'all aced it, which is thank good. You, I you. was hoping you would. <laughs> 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 I don't want to come on and embarrass you and then <laughs> We have All to right. quit the podcast in shame. <laughs> right. I have to take down those Demon Night episodes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then we uh, put out a call to some of our social medias. Um, Jordan, you can check to see if anything new came in, but I captured what we had. I uh, just want to call out a couple of these. Um, our friend Jerry from BJ Slack asked us, um, I was curious on why you decided to have Stephen Kostansky, uh, the director from uh, the, Psycho Gorman as a guest on to review an episode of the show instead of interviewing him for one of the Wednesday special releases you do. Um, and this is a good question because, you know, uh, we, the, the podcast has definitely evolved, you know, over the last year or so. And what I find is that a lot of these people um, that ha- are content creators or directors or actors, you know, they do tons of interview, po- uh, interview uh, episodes with other podcasts. And that's great. I, you know, power, power to them. But what I think it's really interesting is to kind of take those people, give them a chance to, you know, talk with themselves for a few minutes and then kind of put them into our format. Mm-hmm. I think that's a lot more interesting for them um, because the whole, reason, the, the whole reason this one specifically came about was I guess Todd Masters told Stephen about uh, the podcast we had. So he um, friended us on Instagram and I just like was blown away by that fact. So I just messaged him, oh, hey, thanks. He's like, oh yeah, Todd, yada, yada, yada. So we started talking, he sent me a picture that he has a VHS of like, with just three episodes on it. He said since, you know, 20 years, something like that. And I'm like, oh, we're, one of those episodes is coming up. You want to come and talk about that, that episode? And he's like, oh, hell yeah. Nice. So I think for a lot of people, you know, they can come on and talk about their projects and stuff, but they do that all the time. So I like to give, I want to give them something a little fresh to do. Um, now, if it's someone that has, that's worked on Tales, I definitely want to give them more time to talk about those scenes because I'm sure they don't get talked about, uh, you know, I'm sure the actors get talked about the Tales script episode they did 30 years ago. So um, I feel like that's a, that's an, uh, a hole that we're trying to fill. 
Um, so that's why I like to give on those Wednesday episodes people time to 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 really give them that spotlight. Um, so that and that's why you know a lot of other people um, that that will come on uh, there there we interact with um, come on the actual episodes. So I'll give them you know a little bit in the front to kind of you know do a little mini interview, um, just hit up a couple of things. But if you want to go deep dive, yeah, go. I'm sure they have plenty of podcasts out there. And then like our friend Allison who does the Who's There podcast, she does a great job with that. Um, so there's plenty of those people out there doing that kind of work. But I, I, yeah, I, I do really enjoy when we have a guest and we do our normal show and let them talk with us and hang out. It, it feels more like we get to hang out with the guest mm -hmm. as opposed to just talking to them and asking questions, and getting answers. Like we get to actually just, you know, talk about a show. And I think that's conversation. Kind of um, yeah. you, you get to have a conversation with them rather mm -hmm. than it be the one sided kind of interview and you get more stories. I feel like even with your interviews, like the John Kassir one just turned into so many fun stories, too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think you get some really unique stories out of people when, you know, it's not an interview. They can just kind of say what comes to their head and get some fun stories out of them. Yeah. Um, all right. And again, it's just amazing because I never met this guy. And then, you know, after mm -hmm. just a few minutes, he's just a part of the show, you know, and I think yeah. he enjoys that too. Just being like with friends, just talking shit about, you know, Tales from the Crypt. Just another uh, Tales from the Crypt fan. Yeah. 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 And, the, and the hearts were all Tales from the Crypt fan. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Um, so we have someone named Jeremy. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I did put a, I put a little shout out to my friends so I, and i did not look at the questions because i was like oh god they're gonna ask weird is this, things is this, this your is brother your, your this is my brother yeah. all, right. all right we got some good questions uh i sent a couple why is whitney's favorite movie wreck three why did jeremy send this yeah unless i'm um, unless i'm misreading it no that was uh kurt. that has to be kurt okay sorry <laughs> Okay, sorry, I was wrong. Say, my brother should not know that. I wrong do tweet. not like the movie Wreck Three, and Kurt likes it, and we and screamed at each other. That's about the wedding this. one, right? Yes, that's the one where. Spoiler alert! Don't watch it. I think it's a bad movie. Um, <laughs> yeah, I saw it. It was here Tuesday, and I had a great time. But I did not like the movie because it went from um, you know a first person to a third person film, and that took me out of it, and I hated it however so they always laugh at me and they're like Kurt's like I love Rec 3 and I'm like I hate that movie I wrote five pages of notes because at the Alamo Draft House you get paper to write your menus orders down so sometimes I write notes I wrote back in front like five pages of notes about how much I didn't like the movie and um, I even have a plant named John Sponge which was like that fake Spongebob character from the movie um because that's a thing that was at the wedding um and that's the name of my plant because they gave it to me and they're like here's your plant his name is John or I think I named it John Sponge um after my hatred for that movie so that's funny uh I, I remember I like each of the rec movies for different reasons mm -hmm. And I kind of like that one because it was just such a, it was a bit of a unique scenario. And yeah, that point where he's like, stop fucking filming. And that was such a funny meta joke. Yeah. Because everyone, everyone always says, whenever you're watching any uh, found footage, movies, why are they still filming? So someone actually said, yeah. why are you still filming? He's like, oh, okay. And he puts the camera down and it switches. I always thought that was a really funny joke. But I, I can see how some would, you know, it's really can be really discombobulating. Yeah. Really can. throwing people off um I, I, it's yeah. not the worst i think the fourth one is probably the worst but i didn't really like two um and so i probably went in like thinking i'm not gonna like this and then they did mm -hmm. that and i was just i was high who knows what weird mood i was in but i just remember being like i hate this movie and my friends were like oh my god are you okay and i'm like no i had a great time i just hate this movie like what is this film so yeah, I just I still have the notes too. That's um, funny. <laughs> yeah, you should post those and tag the uh, directors. I will. Yeah, I'll be like, look, I pro I think I drew a, a picture at one point. Like I drew the woman <laughs> in her wedding dress. Like I, I was just like, I hate this movie. I'm gonna draw. So awesome. I was probably very um, cross faded at that point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then this one's actually from Jeremy. I got them okay. twisted. Uh, do you remember? Are you afraid of the dark? Uh, Nick or that one episode of S Club, S Club 7, where they got <laughs> lost in the spooky woods. 
I do remember, are you afraid of the dark? I don't, we used to watch S club seven together, which was just this like British pop group that had the TV show. It was very, there were seven of them. That's a lot of people in a group. That's a lot of people. It's in like a group. Yeah. before K-pop was a thing. I feel like, um, <laughs> uh, but I don't remember that. And now I want to go look it up. Um, yeah, S Club 7 is my go-to karaoke song. <laughs> oh, nice. Most people don't know what it is, and they're um, like, what is this? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't remember watching much of Are You Afraid of the Dark. Jody, do you remember this one? Oh, yeah. No, I definitely watched it. That was part of Snick with the big orange mm-hmm. couch. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have cable, but my grandma did. And so if I was over at her house on a Saturday night uh, to spend the night, one of the highlights of being over there was that I got to watch Snick and that was Ren and Stimpy. That was Doug. And that was all that. Mm-hmm. And are you afraid of the dark? So yeah, no, I was really into it back in the day. A lot of fun. Fun fact. We were not allowed to watch all that. Um, we were allowed to watch the Simpsons. We were allowed to watch mm-hmm. Ren and Stimpy. My parents did not. My mom specifically did not let us watch all that because she said that the people were rude to one another. And that was that was the reason. She's like, I don't want y'all being rude. Yeah. Those people are rude. <laughs> yeah, my parents had a thing against Bart Simpson because he was rude. Yeah. yeah. Simpsons was fine. They liked to watch mm. that. But yeah, I, maybe my mom just hated that show. And she's just like, no, they're rude. Don't watch it. <laughs> That Keenan Thompson, nothing's ever going to come from him. He just <laughs> likes orange soda. <laughs> All right, and then we got a tweet from JG, who's the guitarist slash bassist for the band Downcast. Uh, how are you all feeling about season four as it comes to an end with three episodes left? Any episodes in season five you're looking forward to revisiting or watching for the first time? Um, season four has been good. There's been some really big highs. Mm-hmm. There's definitely been some lows. Um, but yeah, I think overall this has been a good season. Like, uh, I feel it might be one of the more uneven seasons. Like, sure. I feel like uh, overall, like again, I, f- I feel like the 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 level of good and the level of bad are like really um, separated. Um, but it's a good season, especially compared to how it's going to get in, in a couple seasons. But uh, there there are some episodes in season five that I am looking forward to. Hmm that uh, I had to look up and see which ones were season five. So. Yeah, I'm looking at that right now. Uh, Death of Some Salesman. Oh, that's a classic. Good one. Yeah. Uh, Forever Ambergris is another good one. Uh, Ambergris. Uh, Ambergris, sure. <laughs> I only know that because of Bob's Burgers. <laughs> yes. Uh, Halfway Horrible is a good episode. I remember all those. Till Death Do We Part, I think, is a, is a decent one. So there's, there's several in season five that I'm looking forward to. Yeah, I mean, definitely Death of Sun Salesman is a big one. Um, uh-huh. Well Cooked Hams, I always hear a lot of good things about that. A lot of these, I don't, I try not to read too much because it's just too right. much information to, because I'm trying to parse these episodes. Um, so and some of them I watched, I'm like, oh yeah, now I remember this. And it's not yeah. until it starts that I recall. Um, but, you know, we got a lot of great people coming up. Billy Zane's in the episode, Michael, Anthony Michael Hall. Uh, oh, wow. Jeffrey Jones, fuck that guy. Yeah, um, sucks. John Stamos is coming up. So mm-hmm. um, yep. yeah, we got some good stuff to look forward to. And then it's like, uh, but then we, we know there's that big like dip after season five, season six and seven are just not great. So we'll kind of roll with that when it gets here. Um, let me get back. And then we had a question from Juliana. How do you feel about the, that the Crypt Keeper and Casper in the same universe? And, you know are they supposedly i forget what the connection is okay um, i didn't know this i forget what it, I, know, I know i've seen this let me see should we investigate to the, the Googles. the crypt keeper and casper are in the same universe oh yeah there's a scene um and casper oh, when looking in the bathroom mirror and the guy turns into the crypt keeper Oh, oh okay. that's funny. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, sure. I mean, I if, love if, Casper. If Casper is undead, the Crypt Keeper is undead, but you know, they can all party together. Sure. <laughs> and isn't Casper was a little boy though. Oh wait, no, but that's his uncle. Casper didn't do that. It doesn't um what's his name? Dan Aykroyd show up in the Casper movie as a Ghostbuster. I think that thing. Something like that. Yeah. 
So then I think that, maybe oh, it's the the ghosts are all like swirling around, and Dan Aykroyd runs out like afraid of them. So it that means like, that the Ghostbuster movies are also the same universe as the Crypt Keeper. That is true. Amazing. So could that's, a Ghostbuster? That's the metaverse I want. Yeah. So could <laughs> it, so could a Ghostbuster take down uh, the Demon Knight? Who knows. Okay, and I want I th- that crossover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing question. We learn something new every day. All right. Um, I think that's all the questions we have. Unless Jody, yeah, you that's find all any. I can find. Yeah. Okay, and then for our advice section, um, Comic Con was this weekend, so uh, we thought we'd riff on that a little bit. Um, Whitney, you've worked on many, many conventions. Um, yeah. and I've been to, you know, over the years now, a good handful of horror conventions. So, um, do you have any good convention tips, stories, advice to someone attending one of these? Yeah, I've worked a handful. Um, I've gone and worked at like PAX, TwitchCon, um, been to BlizzCons, to VidCons, never any horror conventions really, mostly gaming or, you know, online things. So I have a couple of tips to people that have never been that I think would cross over. Um, the first one uh, is that probably the biggest one, um, wear deodorant. Um, I think that it's just of nicety to the point that at Twitch cons, there would be like certain people that gave out goodie bags with ax deodorant that's um, awesome <laughs> yeah so like that was a thing um it gets really hot and there's just a lot of people it actually does i think if you want to do a booth give away deodorant because you'll definitely get people to visit your booth um comfortable shoes are key mm-hmm. you're going to be mm-hmm. standing and walking a lot lines My recommendation is ultra boosts adidas ultra boosts mm-hmm. are super comfy and good to stand on that was my go to working (laughs) at a convention shoe. Um, Yeah, prepare for lines. There's going to be lines for everything Um, and plan your schedule out in advance if you're able to. I know like with things like BlizzCon, for example, there'd be a lot of panels that would cross over from WoW to Diablo to Hearthstone. So, you know, being able to figure out what you want to do and then like realize that you're probably going to have to walk from one place to the next to sell, you know, try to plan out if you're able, wash your hands incredibly often. If to (laughs) me, if you're going to go to a a video game convention don't play any of the video games <laughs> that everyone has been touching <laughs> that controller is very dirty uh, oh, they oh, asked yeah. me to try out that. yeah uh if you want to try out vr say no um <laughs> no shade to you know people that want to get your game played uh pre-covid it, i thought it was strap disgusting the, so, strap this thing to your face that 300 yeah. people are strapped to their face and then they just wipe it down with one alcohol wipe and i'm like no 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 um <laughs> so just wash your hands often um at conventions in general uh you should probably always wear a mask again these were like probably pre-covid rules because it's just crowded and my biggest one is signals can suck at convention centers um and they can be really spotty so setting up a good meeting spot with friends if you get separated um is really key that way um if y'all get separated and you're not able to text each other to meet back up you have a place to go so pick a pick a pretty common area usually there's something right at the beginning of the the convention center it's like a big statue or something you'll be able to just go meet there at a water fountain or something those are all really good um yeah i i I unintentionally went to blizzcon one year i was uh i had a work conference at the same hotel blizzcon was happening in in anaheim it's like probably Mm -hmm. 2011 or 12 um and we you know after we were done for the night i just saw these people walking around that looked like you know my people so i just kind of followed them in and i guess it was so late in the in the evening that they weren't checking badges or anything so i just walked right in to, into blizzcon and they're just like i, I mean like tenacious d had just played or something like that so i guess they didn't really care about security so i just kind of walked around and there's like people just sitting in like huge rows playing uh world of warcraft and you know who knows what else um 
And I was just like, it was it was definitely a weird experience. It's a real experience walking into because you know, people dressed up and all the you know the uh, decorations and everything. It was a scene, man. To to go from like a business conference mm-hmm. to that conference in the same day has got to be a you know little mental whiplash. <laughs> yeah, it, it was weird, but it was fun. Um, but yeah, as far as like horror conventions, if you ever wanted to go, everything I echo everything Whitney said. Uh, the one thing I would say is always buy your tickets in advance um, if if you can. Don't don't try to do day of, um, and bring lots of cash because. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, it's gotten better now with like Square and that people can do um, more easier online payments. So this is, this used to be a much bigger deal that you need to bring cash because the ATM machines are going to run out very quickly. Um, and a lot of people want to be paid, you know, for their autographs or whatever in cash. But I think it's gotten a little better, but it's still a really good uh, tip. But yeah, I, I always bring like, you know, a thing of water. I might bring a couple of canola bars because the line for food is going to be long. The food's going to be expensive. So, you know, the basic stuff that you would do, um, yeah. you know, maybe if it, depending on one time of year, you might just want to bring an extra shirt or something, <laughs> you know, to change out of if, if you're going to be standing out, outside, um, again, if you're in California or, or you know, Florida. Yeah, or a jacket, because, you know, a lot of the times it can get pretty cold because they will blast the AC because there's so many yeah. people. Mm-hmm. I know, especially for BlizzCon, that would be the case. It would be you know, in October typically, which was still pretty hot in Anaheim. And, and, you know, if if you were outside, it would be really hot, but if you wear shorts and you go inside, then you're going to be pretty cold for a while because they've got so many computers set up that they're going to just blast that AC as much as possible. (laughs) So keep it chilly. So yeah, just just bring a whole change of clubs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we I took the family to Disneyland this week, and it was you know like preparing for battle pretty much. We were there from <laughs> eight a.m. to literally to seven p.m. Um, and you know Disneyland's amazing. The, the staff, the, the staff, and the way the organization they have there is just mind boggling. Yeah, uh, well, they have that place running. Mm-hmm. Like again, for me, I, I'm going looking at like oh, you know. This is how the staff, you know, reacts to different situations and stuff. But people are like, oh, cool, the rides and stuff. I want to see, like, you know, I uh, always see the behind the scenes. I'm like, oh, okay, there's someone going through that secret door. Go up when, to one of the princesses or princes and just say, you know, like, hey, can you tell me something about the logistics here? Like, <laughs> I don't I don't want a picture. I just want you to explain to me, you know, mm-hmm. how does well, this work? Well, and there's, again, there's so much trained. Like, we want, my daughter wanted to find um, Ada and Elsa from, you know, from mm-hmm. Frozen. So I go to someone that says, oh, are on the Elsa round today? He's like, oh, they had to go back to Arendelle. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'm like, so cute. And, and I'm like, well, okay, if you're talking to a kid, that's one thing, but like, you're talking to an adult. And they did it with a no. totally straight <laughs> face, like, as Can't if it was the most, character. yeah, as if they were characters themselves. Yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah, it was very cool. You're like, where are they? <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. Um, <laughs> one other thing I, I remember being a thing, um, and I think you, I, I, I'm thinking of it because I know when you posted some photos, your son had um, his headphones, like mm. his earphones on for probably sensory issues. One thing that some conventions have, I know PAX has this, and I don't know if everyone does, but you can pretty much find out ahead of time, um, is some conventions will have um, like sensory rooms for mm. people that do get over heightened and it's a more of a safe place to go. It'll be a lot quieter. They ask people mm-hmm. in that area to be quieter. They might have just like bean bags, And that's something that I saw, at, I think at TwitchCon or a PAX before, and I thought it was a really great idea. Yeah, and you can find if out if places have that. So if you are with a kid that is susceptible to that, or you yourself get overwhelmed, I have crowd anxiety um, specifically at conventions. So I choose to t- try not to go anymore. I'm pretty adamant that I don't ever want to go to a convention again. But um, that's a great place to just kind of escape if it does get to be too much for you. Yeah. And yeah, again, Disney is so accommodating when it comes to um, kids with disabilities and autism. You can get like special passes and things to help you, you know, reserve spaces and lines for kids that can't stand mm-hmm. in line for that long. Yeah. It's it just, it's so, it's such a well calculated machine <laughs> to get our money. But they do want everyone to have like a great time. And I think it's great that there mm-hmm. are places that are, but, Make, being aware that those things aren't necessarily not issues that's not the right word but are just situations that happen and being able to you know 
be like, okay, here's a space for you, or here's something that mm-hmm. we can do so that you can still yeah. be able to enjoy where you're going and be like, I want to go to the convention, but knowing that I can kind of escape to this one place and be safe, it is really nice to, to have. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not my wife. They need like bunkers in Disneyland of like cots and air conditioning for the adults to just sit in <laughs> for 10 minutes at a time. True. <laughs> just got to go to the infirmary. Oh, I twisted my ankle and go to the infirmary and get yeah. a bandaid or something. <laughs> parents recuperation spot exactly all right well i think that wraps up another episode whitney thank you so much for coming on where can people find you yeah i'm whibney please on twitter that's w-i-b-n-e-y p-l-s um so you can find me there i also tweet way more horror things from oh my horror so on twitter o-h-m-y-h-o-o-r cool R- O-R? I don't even know. Yes, you got horror. it. Horror. However you spell horror. It's pretty horror. I was you like, got Wait. it. Yeah. So if you want even more horror from me, that's the place to go. Cool. All right. Next week, we will be reviewing Werewolf Concerto. We appreciate everyone for listening. We would really appreciate it if you would give us a rating and review on iTunes, not reading on Spotify. And with that, we thank you for listening to Dads from the Crypt. <laughs> Follow Dads from the Crypt on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or I will follow you to the grave. <laughs> no, seriously, you really should watch, but be careful what you ask for. You may get it. <laughs>